Hello everybody and welcome to OmniPoke, the channel that brings you everything Pokemon. I'm Jack and today we're back on PTCGO, bringing you yet again another deck analysis uh, on a big new fairy archetype that's come out of Primal Clash, basically uh, revolving around Mega Gardevoir. Now Mega Gardevoir I'm pretty sure is one of the last decks to solely come out of Primal Clash that we've, uh, we've got to cover on the channel, so I wanted to get it up just so you've got something to base your lists on even if we do adapt the list over time uh, I have been playing with the list probably two or, two or three weeks and I'm pretty happy with this list I've got, I've got at the moment um, it's called I've called it Thin Gardevoir, I've also got a thicker Gardevoir uh, list where it's a 3-3 Gardevoir um, but this time we're going to be running a 2-2 Gardevoir line obviously the Gardevoir is an okay attacker, life leap is not a bad attack for one energy if you have to start with it obviously there's many many other uh, Pokemon that you want to be starting with but Life Leap could be a lot worse and then Shining Wind is actually really useful in the uh, Metal Match matchup because during your opponent's next turn Gardevoir has no weakness so unless they have a way of being able to get out to get the Gardevoir out of the active position they have no way of being able to uh, hitting for hit, hit well hit for weakness on Gardevoir the next turn, which is really nice. And then obviously we've got uh, two Mega Gardevoir in here, just because this brilliant arrow attack is so strong. 30 damage times the number of Fairy Energy on the field, uh, on your side of the field, sorry. So you can get crazy numbers with this attack. As you can see, we're running 12 Energy, so we can actually get really big numbers with this attack. You can go up to 360 damage, which is absolutely insane. Um, it's often we're not going to be getting up to the 360 damage, but you only you need 7 energy on the field to be doing 210, and 8 energy on the field to be doing 240 damage, uh, which can knock out pretty much everything in the game right now, bar a Mega Aggron with uh, Shield Energy, or a Waylord EX, and I only, only anticipate saying one of those uh, in competitive play, so I'm not too w worried about the Waylord. Then we're obviously going to be running an Aromatisse-based uh, sort of setup build with Gardevoir, just for this really useful fairy transfer ability, letting you move around your fairy energy as uh, freely as you like, which makes Max Potion really good as well, because you can move all of your energy off of Max Potion, or all of your energy off of a Pokemon, and then use Max Potion, and then shovel the energy back on again, and it's like you've got a new Gardevoir, or a new Florgis, or a new Xerneas, whatever you're playing with. So, Fairy Transfer is really good for um, Max Potion. Uh, Starters-wise, as I said, Gardevoir isn't too bad, but we primarily want to be starting with Xerneas. Xerneas is obviously the Dex Energy Acceleration, Geomancy letting you search your deck for two basic energy, uh, basic Fairy Energy cards, and attaching them to your Pokemon. So that's incredibly useful. It means that you don't have to worry about always getting the Professor's Letter or and out to energy the next turn because you've always got another way of being able to um, get the energy onto the board if you have a way of being able to get Xerneas into play turn one and then uh, the difference between the 3-3 three, three Aromatis line is actually these two cards here the Florgis EX and the Xerneas EX now the Florgis EX is again not too bad of a start Florgis EX has that one energy lead attack, letting you search your deck for a supporter. So if the worst comes to the worst and you have to start with Florgis, it's not too bad. You can secure yourself as a supporter next turn, and the only way your opponent can get rid of it is if they end you. So lead is not too bad of an attack to start with. And Bright Garden is another really efficient two energy attack that lets you do pretty big damage in the early game. You're always going to have a high bench with Fairy style decks because you've got you're going to have at least one Aromatis if not two you're probably going to have one or two Xerneas depending on if one goes down you're going to have at least one Gardevoir and the odds are you're going to have probably uh, either the Florgis or the Xerneas EX as well unless you need one of these other two Pokemon in in play for any real reason so Bright Garden can be doing really big damage but even if you don't have uh, all, well, six Pokemon in play, six fairy Pokemon in play. A hundred damage for two is nothing to sniff at at all, and 
is just a re another really efficient attacker. It gets set up a lot quicker than Mega Gardevoir, and that's why I've decided to go for a bit of a thinner Mega Gardevoir line, just to have a focus on the early game a little bit more. We can quite easily get a Floor CX out and start hitting for damage while we set up our Mega Gardevoir on the bench. Whereas if we just had the Mega Gardevoir, we'd have to spend a bit more time setting it up. And while we would have a more consistent out to getting Gardevoirs, it would mean that the uh, early game pressure is not quite as strong as with this list. And then, as I, as I mentioned, the Xerneas CX Breakthrough is a really nice attack, 60-30 60, 60, snipe. It's not quite as good as some of the other sniping attacks out there at the moment, but it's not... Uh, well, not a bad attack by any means. It's a, ni a nice amount of damage. The 30 snipe is always useful and can really help with um, things like Mega Aggron and things, uh, which I'll explain in a little bit. And then X Blast 4 for 140. Uh, considering you can use X Blast, then move all the energy off, uh, or move energy off, retreat using Fairy Garden, and then into another attacker, you're getting 140 for free, basically, which is so good. Um, 140 damage is obviously really good for knocking out the X's and pairs really well with the breakthrough attack because you can snipe them something on the bench that has 170 HP, bring them down to 140, and then next turn X blast them and get rid of a potentially big threat on your opponent's side of the field. Then, as you can see, the last two cards we've got one Charizard and one Jirachi. Uh, the Charizard is, again, not too bad of a starter. It's definitely the worst start, probably um, one of the worst starters in the deck. But we can we can use Stoke if we really need to. Um, flip an energy, if he flip an energy. Flip a coin if head search your deck for up to three basic energy and attach them to Charizard. So this can get your fairy energy out incredibly quickly if you feel safe and secure that Charizard isn't going to be knocked out next turn. You can, e uh, you can easily risk a Stoke. But we're primarily using Charizard for this Fire Blast attack. Now, as you can see, pretty much all of the metal Pokemon, uh, all of the Fairy Pokemon in the deck, I think all of them do, have a weakness to Metal. And obviously, Metal is weak to Fire. So Charizard really helps not only our Metal match but our Virgin match. Um, not that it really needs a, too much help with the Virgin match because you can sometimes overpower them anyway. But Charizard is just another attacker that can easily one-shot anything in their deck. Um, the only thing that Charizard can't one-shot in a metal deck is, again, a uh, Mega Aggron with shield energy, sorry. Obviously, because you're going to be doing 240, and if they've got a shield energy, they're going to reduce that to 230, um, depending on how many shield energy they play. But I've seen lately, as I've been playing online, that people seem to be lowering their shield energy count a little bit just because they can't use it with metal links. And therefore, I feel Charizard's still a pretty good play. And I've also chosen this Charizard over the other Charizard, uh, which has just 150, because that is certain to knock out a Mega Aggron, but requires two Fire Energy, which would mean it requires two Rainbow Energy down here. Um, which is... It doesn't seem like much, but it can be really, really important. And can sometimes mean you can't get the Combustion Blast attack off. So I feel Fire Blast is still the better play. And obviously, again, it pairs really well with Xerneas CX's Breakthrough Attack. Because if you've done just a little bit of damage to the benched, uh, to a benched Mega Aggron, or you've hit them in the face for 230, a Breakthrough will c can come in and snipe the Mega Aggron and uh, still get you the two prizes, not a problem. Which is really nice. And then finally... Uh, I've been putting Jirachi in EX in pretty much all of my decks as of, as of late. I read an article, I think it was on six prizes, but I could be completely wrong about that, explaining how Jirachi isn't as much of a sort of risk in your deck as a lot of people think it is. Obviously, it's awful starting with it, um, but we have Fairy Guard and we have Aromatis, so it could be a lot worse. Um, but the big, th big thing about, uh, well, people think about playing Jirachi is uh, putting it down is going to be a free two prizes for your opponent. Uh, and that's only the case if your opponent decides to take the two prizes. If you, they're often going to be going out of their way to take off your, the, your out to damage. So your Gardevoirs, your Aroma, um, not Aromatises, your Fluorgises, your Xerneases. 
So they're often going to be trying to slow you down. So sometimes they'll just completely forget about the Jirachi EX. And even if they do take the two prizes on the Jirachi EX, you still have a full board set up. So it's not like you need the Jirachi EX again. So you, you haven't really lost anything. I mean, you've lost two prizes, but you've still got a full board set up. So I feel Jirachi is definitely justified in a lot of decks at the moment. And any setup deck, I feel it's even more justified just because of how powerful this Stellar Guidance ability is, getting you out of supporter locks. Um, onto the trainers, there's not too much different as to a sort of a standard Aromatease list. We've got one computer search. Obviously, there's lots of little puzzle pieces that you're going to need to be able to set up a big Mega Gardevoir, whether it be the Xerneas or the Aromatease, or the uh, one of the Mega Gardevoir pieces, or the sort of Gardevoir Spirit Link, anything like that. Or even a Max Potion just to be able to heal yourself up to take another hit next turn. There's lots of little pieces that you're going to need to be able to set up a big Mega Gardevoir or even one of these other two attackers. So having Computer Search means that you can get all the little pieces that you need to be able to sort of get your Mega Gardevoirs going as quickly as possible and dealing as much damage as early as possible to sort of out, uh, well, out, overrun your opponent, sorry, and take six prizes before they've probably got set up. Um, so I've gone for, a lot of people play dowsing instead of computer search and I completely understand that it could probably mean I could lower my spirit link count by one perhaps my um, max potion count by one but I feel computer search searching for the extra extra puzzle piece like I said I, that I need um, is a better play in this deck because we have a mega evolution as explained earlier the three max potion is pretty much just for uh, sustaining yourself and not going down to hits as easily. If you've got a something that you're just really walling with, like a Mega Gardevoir or Xerneas that you're just taking hits with, you can quite easily ma uh, move the energy off with Aromatis, Max Potion the Pokemon, and it's as good as new, ready to take a few more hits or even deal damage again. So it's a really good card in, in any energy manipulation deck, really, that can move energy off. Starling Megaphone, um, the deck is so reliant on Aromat uh, Aromatisse's ability, and it means that Gar uh, Garbodor can be a problem. I've only got one in here because you can get away with just manually using Geomancy and setting up your Gardevoirs like that, but it's the, the deck becomes a whole lot more efficient if it has the Aromatisse's ability. So... Perhaps a second would be useful, or this is where the dowsing would be useful. But I've only gone for one, just because of how reliant we are on some of the other cards in the deck. Um, you can, like I said, you can get away with not needing a second one, because you can just purely use Geomancy three or four times, and then start swinging for big damage with Brilliant Arrow that way. But, because all of these cards trade really well with... Pretty much, well, Seismito DX is the big sort of partner for Garbodor at the moment. So, all of these cards trade really well with Seismito DX, considering they're, they're off, you know, you're doing 50 damage. So, you can get away with it, but I still like one in here, just if you have the opportunity to get a Garbodor offline to get your abilities back online, it's so useful. We've then got three Ultra Ball. Uh, there's no real ball search that is really useful for any of these um, cards. There's re Repeat Ball isn't too useful because we don't have many repeating cards and obviously Dive Ball's useless and I don't like Great Ball. Obviously Ultra Ball is the best ball search in the game. So I've gone for three Ultra Ball. I don't really feel you need the fourth because once you've sort of got set up you need your Pokemon less than, you there's less than some other decks. You don't need to stream them as much. And obviously we also have fan clubs in here to be able to get our basics out really quickly. But I could probably justify a fourth if the space is to be found. But I'm pretty happy with the three at the moment. Obviously VS Seeker is inbuilt with all of our supporters. Three VS Seeker just means you have so much more versatility with your supporters. Uh, not really much else to say there. Two Colrus because you're going to be having a big bench pretty much 90% of the time. You're going to be going for a big bench just to be able to store all of this brilliant, uh, this fairy energy for brilliant arrow. 
So a big bench just means even more cards to draw, which is really nice. And that's why I've also gone for 3N, because a later later on in the game, Chorus is just so much better in N in, uh, than N in this deck. And you, you don't really want to be Ning yourself down to a low hand when you, can, when you have the ability to Chorus for a high hand. Lysander is uh, really useful for Domfan, and really useful for taking two prizes with Breakthrough if you've damaged something on the bench, and then you can catch something else up and, da and damage to knock out sort of two very small basics, like two opposing Spritzies or anything like that. Um, I would, I don't, I don't know, I perhaps could reduce that to one, but I feel two Lysanders is a good number at the moment. Two fan club, obviously there's, again, lots of little pieces that you need. Um, Spritzies are the big, big thing. And Xerneas, you want to be getting Xerneas and Spritzies out turn one as often as possible. Which means fan club is really useful in the deck. Because even if you just start with one of them, you can get another two basics out. And secure yourself from the donk as well. So obviously fan club is really useful. And then Juniper, because Juniper is the best drawer in the game. And I don't really feel I need to explain that one. Uh, finally, we've got three Fairy Garden. I would love to have a fourth in here because the the amount of times I whiff the Fairy Garden is untrue. But three Fairy Garden just means every, pretty much everything in the deck. Why you've got an Aromity set up has free retreat. So not, you're not affected by Lysanders. You're not affected by sort of um, anyone playing Escape Rope, anything like that. Not a problem. And then finally, the three Gardevoir Spirit Links. Um, because I, I did run three in here when I had a 3-3 three, three line and I debated taking one out but I feel the guard of our spirit link is so important or spirit links in general are so important to be able to get the megas up and get them if out, out as efficiently as possible I still think think three is the right number to play at the moment especially as seismitoad is still around it means if you can get one on early not a problem and you can still get your mega guard for out without wasting a turn and then finally, as you saw earlier, we've got nine fairy energy and three rainbow energy. Uh, if it wasn't for the Charizard, I would run 12 fairy energy just to avoid enhanced hammers. But enhanced hammers seem to be going a little bit down in play. So I've gone for three rainbow energy just to be able to, oh, just to be able to use Charizard a little bit more. I've just deleted the Charizard from the deck. So let's just throw the Charizard back in and. Um, I think I'm going to save the deck and head on into a game for you guys, just to show you how the deck runs. I have not been on PTGO very much lately. Um, school has been pretty painful as of late, but I've been playing a little bit sort of off PTCGO on Skype with um, Mega Gardevoir. So hopefully we will get a decent game. And we seem to be waiting for our opponent to flip the coin. He is going to get a heads, meaning that he will get to choose whether he goes first and he doesn't need to go first. Seem to be playing a uh, an opponent called Matt Blower. I do know someone called Matt Blower, so um, th this may be the same same person. But we have unfortunately started with Charizard, which is a little bit painful. But hopefully we can find a way of being able to get into something of use. He's going to start Vulpix and bench a Mewtwo and attach a Metal to it. So we could be seeing some sort of Metal deck to power up Mewtwo, that would be interesting. Um, here we do have a way of being able to get into a Xerneas. It's whether I want to risk the Stoke, but with that Mewtwo sitting on the bench, he could deal a big chunk of damage next turn. So I think I'm going to go for the um, Xerneas play to try and get the Xerneas uh, doing some Geomancies. Always useful to check the Gardevoir line in in the deck. So we've got two Gardevoirs and one Mega, two Mega. So we've got both of our Megas as well. And actually, Spirit Links is always a good idea to check as well. There's one there, two there, and three there. Okay, so we've got all three Spirit Links and two. Two two Gardevoir. Hmm. So I think I'm going to get this Charizard out of the way. 
I could I could computer search to get the fairy garden, like I say, get it out of the way. But I'm now I'm I'm wondering whether the Stoke might be the good play because I can't see us needing the Charizard, though he has got metal energy on the field. Um There's no way of being me being able to get the Geomancy off this turn. So I think we're just gonna Stoke, see whether we get the heads, why not? And then we've also got the computer search for next turn to see whether we can indeed get something else of use. We don't get the Stoke, so that's unfortunate, but we will be able to get the Geomancy off next turn, which is all alright. He does indeed get the second Metal Energy, and is going to go for a switch, meaning that we're going to be taking a hit from the Muti for 60 damage, unless he has a way of getting a Muscle Band or anything like that. And he's then going to Ultra Ball, so we're probably going to see... We're going to see a Manetric, that's interesting. So Manetric, Vulpix, and Mewtwo EX. That's a pretty odd combination, but there could be something here. He's going to attach the Manetric Spirit Link, bench another Manetric, and do 80 with the Muscle Band. Okay. So we're going to go for... Ultimately, we're going to be going for the Juniper at the end of the turn. So, I think the big thing here is going to be searching for the Aromatisse with the computer search. So, where is the Aromatisse? There's the Aromatisse. We're going to be getting the, that Aromatisse down. I'm going to attach the energy to the Xerneas. I'm then going to use Fairy Transfer on the Charizard just to move the energy off, just because we've got a max potion and otherwise it will go to waste. So we'll then max potion the Charizard and then throw down a Juniper and grab another 7 cards. Hopefully we get a Fairy Garden. We do indeed get a Fairy Garden so that it's all turned out perfectly. And we also get 2 Gardevoirs. Now I'm debating putting both Gardevoirs down, it could be useful. But we could get another Attacker down. Um, but I feel like the two Gardevoirs may be, may be a good plan. So we'll just go with the two Gardevoirs, show off what Gardevoir can do. We've also got a Megaphone, so get that pesky Spirit Link out of the way. And then, again, we can Fairy Garden, moving the energy off of the Aromatisse onto the Charizard. And then able to free retreat into the Xerneas and use Geomancy to attach to both of the Gardevoir EX. So there's only one more basic fairy in the deck, which is a little bit worrying, because that means there's um, a few prized, but if we can quickly take some prizes, it should all be okay. We have also got another one in our hand, which is not bad at all. We're going to see a Professor's Letter searching for two energy, attaching one to the Manetric, and then a Chorus, and then a Silent Lab. Silent Lab's not... Silent Lab isn't too big for the deck, it only shuts off the Jirachi, but ideally we would like it out of the way. Though he does play Nine Tails, which means that we will not be getting our Fairy Garden down this uh, anymore this game, which is a little bit of a little bit of an issue, but that's okay. I'm going to I think I'm gonna attach the energy to the Gardevoir. The rainbow energy. Just so we've got it down on the field, and then just go for another Geomancy. Attaching to the other two Pokemon without two energy. Obviously, there's only one more in the deck, though. So we've now got one, two, three, four, five, six energy on the field, which means Mega Gardevoir will be doing 180. Sorry, 120. No, sorry, 180. A little bit dodgy maths there. Yeah, he'll be doing 180 if we can get. Mega Gardevoir onto the field next turn. We do see a Spirit Link and then a Mega Manetric come down. And just another big chunk of damage on the Xerneas. So I'm going to probably let this Xerneas go down this turn. I can't see a way of being able to get the Fairy Garden down. So we're just going to Juniper away. The Eurymetes and the other Fairy Garden. Um, we do actually get the Max Potion, which could be useful. It could stall him out a little bit more. But I can't really see a way of me being able to stall for too much longer. 
Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll move the energy off of the Xerneas, put it on the other Gardevoir, and I think I'll leave it there. Obviously there's no way of be me being able to Geomancy this turn, so we're just going to let this Xerneas go down and then hopefully get a big hit off with Gardevoir next turn. He's an Ennis getting us another 6, and unfortunately we do get Head Ringed, which is really, really annoying. And the Xerneas is going to go down to the Mega Manetric. He's going to attach 2 to the Cobalion EX. So here, what I think I'm going to do... I think I'm going to... Hmm... This is a pretty big decision... We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 energy on the field, so we could take out this Mega Manetric this turn. But next turn we are going to go down to a Cabalion EX. So that's a pr pretty, pretty big... Hmm. Or well, the alternative is going into the Charizard and then Lysandering up the Cabalion EX. But I feel like the Mega Manetric is probably more of a threat at the moment. So I'm going to go into the Gardevoir, and okay, we've got some things to do here, so we can Mega Evolve into the Gardevoir, and then what supporters have we used? We, we have used an N, so I think I'm going to VS Seeker for the N, I might throw another Spritzy down just in case he wants to try and take out my Aromatisse, and then I'm going to VS Seeker for the N, just because I don't want to discard both of those Lysanders because they're going to be useful for taking out anything on the bench that we don't really like. We do get a another Rainbow Energy. Unfortunately, the Cabellian X will be able to knock us out next turn. Hmm. So I think it would probably make sense to still attach the energy to the Gardevoir. and then move the rainbow energies off and oh and then move two fairy energy on so we can still use that brilliant arrow attack um i think i'm also going to throw down a floor just here just because we don't need to keep the bench spot around for Jirachi, so I think I'm going to throw down another, a floor just, just so we've got another attacker to play with. And then we're going to Brilliant Arrow to knock out this Mega Manetric. Drawing two prizes, hopefully an energy. We do indeed get an energy, so we're going to lose three next turn. But we will at least be getting one, which is nice. He is indeed going to throw up that Cabalion, and he's going to be able to take the two prizes, I would imagine, with Steel Bullet. Oh, the da the attack is not affected by weakness. I did not know that. There we go. He's going to bring up the Gardevoir EX and deal pretty big damage to it. Um, hmm. Do we have a way of being able to get the Spirit Link this turn? I'm going to attach the energy to probably the Gardevoir. Just so we have the ability to attack with it next turn if we move an energy off. And then I think probably Chorusing here is going to be the best chance of being able to get the Spirit Link and the Mega. We do unfortunately miss the Spirit Link which is really, really bad. Um, hmm. We could retreat here. We would lose two energy but we... That there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the board. We'd lose 2, so we'd have 6 on the board. We would still be able to knock out this Cabalion EX. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do here. Retreat into the Mega Gardevoir. That's not nice. I really wish we had the Fairy Garden in, the, in play at the moment. 
but let's just double check my maths. We're going to be, be doing 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180 to knock out this Cabalion. So we're going to go for another brilliant arrow. I don't think I'm missing anything. Nope. I'm going to knock it out and take another two prizes. Hopefully get another energy. We do get a rainbow and a max potion. That could be really useful if he doesn't manage to get this Garbodor set up next turn. He does indeed get the, manage to get the Garbodor set up. But the max potion could be useful nonetheless. He's going to then retreat into the Ninetales and leave it to go down next turn. Okay, so he's giving us a... We're, we're going to be giving him a one-turn clock because next turn we're going to only need one more prize. Um, if, we can, if we can find a Lysander this turn, we will be able to take the last two prizes. But unfortunately, I can't see a way of being able to find the Lysander. So I'm just going to attach the... Um. Yeah, I'm gonna attach the f uh the rainbow energy onto the Charizard, just because we want to have this guy able to attack, just in case he drops another Cabalion. And I'm then gonna go for hmm. The end would be useful, but it's gonna put him up to. A bigger hand so I'm just gonna go for the brilliant arrow because we know we're gonna be able to take out potentially something next turn we do get another energy so even if again we go down we will be able to attack with Charizard next turn if n if nothing else and he does throw the Garbodor up meaning that if he leaves this Gardevoir, Gardevoir, uh, Gar Garbodor sorry, up and or doesn't knock out this Gardevoir, we will indeed have a way to win next turn. He's going to Skylar for nothing and then concede the game. So, as you can see, Mega Gardevoir can do some huge damage. 210 dam uh, 240 damage, I'm pretty sure, was the biggest, biggest hit we took that game. Which is absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, not much else to say about Gardevoir. It's a l so much fun to play. And... Definitely one of the best new sort of fairy attackers out of the new Primal Clash set. So definitely give it a go if you haven't yet. You will certainly enjoy it, I'm sure of that. Um, but by that, not much else to say. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack from Omnipoke and see you in another video.